M says, hey team, my dad has a hiatus hernia and asked me for some exercises that are safe for him to do to strengthen his abdominal wall. I suggested planks, toe taps, leg extensions and heel taps. Do you have any advice on what would be safe for him to do for me to add to his program? Thanks in advance. Uh, well, Em, I, uh, first let's start out by talking about what a hiatus hernia is. So you uh, have in your rib cage, it's called your thoracic cavity, and inside your thoracic cavity is your heart and your lungs. And separating your thoracic cavity from your abdominal cavity is a muscle called the diaphragm muscle. And it's a dome-shaped muscle, as in it is uh, kind of semi-spherical and it's you know bulges upwards towards the top. Well, bulges isn't right the, the right word. It's curved um, with the top being higher or it's convex superiorly, would be the anatomical way of saying it. And underneath your diaphragm, you have your various uh, abdominal organs. And one of those that's right up the top on the left-hand side is your stomach, which is a little bag of muscle. It's a little muscular bag with three layers of muscle in its walls that squeeze and compress your food every which way to digest it. Now, going from your mouth to your stomach is a tube called your esophagus. And your esophagus goes down uh, through your diaphragm through a space in a little hole in the diaphragm called the esophagus. Geal. I'm not sure if I spelled that right, but uh, I think there's an E in there somewhere. And it's called the esophageal hiatus. And hiatus just means space. So it's just the little gap in the diaphragm where your esophagus, your food tube, goes down from your mouth all the way down to your stomach. And the stomach itself is pretty much directly um, up against the diaphragm beneath the esophageal hiatus and a hiatus hernia is where and a hernia sorry is where in general is where an organ uh, pro protrudes into or out of a body cavity um, and a hiatus hernia is where some part of your stomach protrudes up through the esophageal hiatus into the uh thoracic cavity into your chest where your heart and lungs are and typically this uh, in uh, typically this can be either asymptomatic so no symptoms or there can be symptoms like heartburn and reflux um, you know um, basically stomach pains um, and uh, but in very rare cases it can uh, if too much of the stomach bulges up it can uh, cause uh, problems for the heart because it basically presses up against the heart. So um, it should be managed by a doctor. And in terms of exercise, I did look on Google Scholar and I found absolutely nothing, not a single study in relation to hiatus, hernia and exercise in all of the history of time. Um, so I'm really uh, working from first principles here. But uh, what I would say to you based on first principles is that uh, what would cause, you know, what would plausibly um, cause the, the stomach to herniate up into the thoracic cavity um, would be an increase in pressure inside the abdomen, uh, inside the abdomen, which is called intra-abdominal pressure. So intra just means within and abdominal pressure. So basically, if there's more pressure inside the abdomen than in the thoracic cavity, well, that will push things up and it will also push things down and it will also push things out. Um, so intra-abdominal pressure, uh, I would imagine, would be something that may aggravate it. Um, and so, and also just mechanical movements where the stomach is 
pressed upwards. So I'm thinking uh, anything that increased intra-abdominal pressure might be good to give it a miss if it increases symptoms. If it doesn't increase symptoms, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But I would say, so basically what's going to increase intra-abdominal pressure is if you breath hold um, or brace. So basically, um, if you go, which is called the Valsalva maneuver, or if you if your dad does that, that that's that is a maneuver that we do to increase our intra-abdominal pressure, and that helps us to brace our spine and keep things stiff. Um, and so, uh, I'm guessing that might uh, potentially worsen his symptoms. If it doesn't worsen his symptoms, I wouldn't worry about it. Like I said. But um, so I would, I would rather than avoiding certain exercises, I would more say like breathe through it. So whatever exercise you do, just breathe, don't breath hold. Um, I would probably avoid uh, again if it aggravated symptoms only. Um, uh, prolonged isometric contractions like hold, you know, like planks and things like that. Um, if it doesn't aggravate symptoms. I would say it's probably perfectly fine. And if prolonged isometric holes like planks and things do aggravate symptoms, well, you could just basically do the same movement but move in and out of it. So you could basically go, say, say from a down dog position to a plank to a down dog to a plank or go, you know, like just move in and out of it somehow basically um, so that you're not holding for a sustained period which tends to increase intra-abdominal pressure so that would be the first thing the second thing and i'm kind of just basically guessing here but um i would tend to suspect that flexion would tend to you know reduce the intra-abdominal space you know there's less space inside the abdomen when you flex um, and that would tend to you know push the organs uh, every which way and I would imagine um, as I just you know imagine the anatomy and where stuff is I imagine that would possibly push the stomach upwards into the diaphragm uh, so yeah that may be something that aggravates symptoms uh, and taking a deep in breath um, again in a flexed position um, might also aggravate symptoms because that would push the diaphragm down you know, as you inhale, the diaphragm descends. It 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 uh, is a curved muscle when it's at rest, and when it contracts, it shortens, which causes it to flatten, or in other words, descend. Uh, and so, as it descends, it could conceivably, you know, kind of squeeze past the top of the stomach. Um, so, I would say uh, probably avoid breath holding, avoid prolonged isometrics. You know, just move in and out of it, and. Uh, I don't know about avoid flexion, but I would say uh, yeah, particularly avoid combined flexion plus a deep inhale at the same time. Um, but I would say like own, be guided by symptoms. If, if none of that aggravates his symptoms, don't worry about it. Um, but if any of those things aggravate his symptoms, uh, you know, find alternatives. So I hope that helps. I'm sorry it's really just basically guesswork based on my understanding of the anatomy of what's going on. And there doesn't seem to be any research on exercise and hiatus hernia. Um, what I did find is it's mostly uh, controlled with medication and sometimes surgery. So yeah, but I'm sure you're on top of all that. Mm -hmm.